Good morning, and welcome to Hively Avenue Mennonite Church. We are a small crowd this morning, but I'm sure we will be filling in slowly but surely. Uh, It's good to see some newer faces this morning. Uh, So maybe we will open up with a little time of introductions. If you have a loved one with you that maybe has been here previously but isn't often here with us, please uh, feel free to introduce them, and we'll be glad to meet them this morning. Hi, this is Gay Kaufman, and Sean is our son. He's here from Denmark, visiting for a few days. Leroy Sainer, Winifred and I are happy to have our son Leland here with us today from Silver Spring, Maryland. I would like to introduce my nephew, Jafet Olimo. He's coming from Tanzania. He arrived on Monday. He's going to join the University of Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And they're wandering around in the back, but I'll announce you might see creep in here. There he is. There's, that's my uh, brother, Eli Hess, joining us from uh, northern Arkansas. Uh, his family's here this week as well. And then my mom just got in last night from Colorado. So we've got quite the national and international crew here this morning. You guys will have to battle out to see who has the uh, longest travel time getting here. I'm not sure between you and JFET. But uh, wow. Welcome, everyone. So good to see everyone here this morning. Uh, Just a few announcements we'll start off with and then uh, roll into our service. So just a reminder, the office will be closed tomorrow morning um, to celebrate the Christmas holiday. Uh, A reminder about our New Year's Eve service this coming week. It will be Friday, December 31st, of course, on New Year's Eve at 7 p.m. So please come and join us. Uh, It'll be geared more for adults, so kiddos might not be the most uh, intriguing service for you, but for uh, adults, we would invite you to come join us for for the service. And uh, also just a reminder of our Uh, giving project that's going on should be wrapped up today. So if you didn't bring it with you, we might be out of time now. But thank you for those of you that have donated to the the giving project. Well, we continue this morning uh, into our fifth Sunday of the Advent season. You can count our candles up there, and we will be lighting soon our fifth Christ candle. We are in a series on daring to imagine. So we've dared to imagine God's face. Today we are daring to imagine God's robe. We don't often think of God's garments and what that might mean. Um, It reminded me as I was thinking of it of a a quote from one of my favorite authors, George MacDonald. He says, uh, Jesus Christ is the way out and the way in from every slavery, conscious or unconscious. From the unholiness of things to the home that we desire but do not know. It says, from the stormy skirts of the Father's garments to the peace of his heart or the peace of his bosom. So as we enter into this time of worship this morning, think of, thinking of what it means to uh, move from sort of the stormy skirts or the fringes of God to the, the very heart of God. I pray that we would uh, make that journey today as we talk about imagining God's robe. So please join with me in the call to worship. You'll find it in your printed bulletin. Uh, This is an adaptation from Psalm 148. 
and we will be dividing it up uh, between our sections. So if you're directionally challenged this morning, this is our north section. This will be our sort of central section, our south section, and I'll try to point to you as we go through, but let's join in this together. So beginning with our northerners, Alleluia, praise Yahweh from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, sun and moon, all of us. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God from the earth, sea creatures and ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and mist. Sing praise to God, mountains and hills, fruit trees and cedars, small animals and flying birds. Let them praise God's name. Let all creation praise the name of Yahweh, whose name alone is exalted. Praise God's name. Alleluia. I would invite Ed up to lead us in our first hymns this morning. I'd like you to just stand if you're able to sing number 247, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And if there are sopranos that would like to sing the descant on verse 3, uh, feel free to do so. Angels we have heard on high.
We come now to our fifth week of lighting the Advent candles, and I will invite Elia and Asher up to help us light this morning the Christ candle. As we heard on Christmas Eve, and as we all celebrated together holding our candles in a circle around the darkened sanctuary, uh, that Christ came and that Christ was the light in the darkness and that the darkness has not overcome it. And we will join together in our litany written in our bulletins this morning. It's hard sometimes when you don't get to blow out candles. <laughs> we light the Christ candle and we welcome new life. Hurry, hurry, sing the glory. Imagine that we are God's wonders, blessed wonders. Please join us now in 239, He Came Down. Our confession time this morning, please uh, feel free to close your eyes if you feel comfortable as uh, we read through this confession. There will be times of pause where you can uh, sit and just reflect and confess in your own heart what you desire to bring before God. Um, but open your mind and open your heart at this time to what is uh, feeling broken inside of you, from what feels broken inside of our world, and let that sit openly before God this morning. God, we bring our brokenness to you. Our bodies, minds, relationships. We trust you, God, the source of wholeness and miracles, to take our fragments, jagged edges, and pain. Bring 
healing, God, and forgiveness in ways we cannot imagine. Restore the joy of our salvation as only you can do. Hear these words of assurance. God forgives you. Forgive yourself. Forgive. Be at peace. Amen. We've got a newer song this morning that was introduced to us last week. And I'm very thankful to our wonderful song leaders and our song singing group uh, that have gathered to kind of teach it to us and are gathering in part this morning to help us with it again. So thank you. I think you need to stand up so that if you want to move a little bit to this, you can do that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this group could help us out here. <laughs> Thank you all. All right, kiddos, come on up. Miss Beth has a wonderful story time to share with you as we all learn to dare to imagine God's robe together. So kiddos, come on up, or kiddos young at heart can come on up too if you desire. see my face. Oh, hello, welcome. It's Merry Christmas. It's only a day late, but we can always celebrate Christmas. How, how do I look today, huh? Do I look like what everybody else is wearing? It's lovely. Oops, let's not kill myself here. Ah, the beautiful robe and this fell off. That's okay. I'll hold it up here. Um, you know, most people don't wear these. What are these? What is this? What would you call it? You've ever, ever seen it before? It's called a robe. Yep. And, you know, people don't wear robes here most of the time, except if they're in a choir. But people in the time of the Old 
time, in the Bible time, they, let's see if I can get this back on, and maybe not. Anyway, they, um, they wore robes like this all the time. And as we had tried to imagine this, maybe Jesus looked something like this, wearing a robe, okay, or a tunic. And, you know, he probably only wore the robe to his knees, kind of like me. Now, the rich people, they love to wear long, flowing robes that went all the way to their ankles, so everybody knew they were very, very important. But the people who wore tunics to their knees were the slaves and the soldiers and the people who did hard physical labor. And you know what? Jesus didn't care. He didn't want to look like the rich people. And maybe they looked down on him because he wore such simple clothes. But he didn't try to prove he was a fancy king. He was God's servant bringing good to all the people, the poor and the needy and the sick and the outcasts. Now, Paul, who was a follower later on of Jesus, he said, he talked about robes and said we should put on clothes. Oh, okay, well, we have clothes on, but what kind of special clothes? Let's see. Let me grab these here. He said we should put on a cloth, a cloth of, let's see what kind, compassion or caring. And so, you know, if somebody's really sad, we can help make them feel a little happier by listening to them and saying kind words and comforting them. And Paul said then we should put on a cloth of kindness. And you guys know about that, sharing your toys and saying kind things to people and doing special things for people. So we got care and kindness. And then he said to put on a cloth of patience. Now, if you've had little brothers or sisters, you know about patience. Because they like to do everything you do and follow you around and sometimes even follow you to the bathroom. I mean, that's a little much. But you just say, no, no, you need to leave. Okay, so there's patience. And then... We're supposed to put on something of peace. And that's where we stop fighting with each other and arguing. And we say kind words to each other and we forgive each other. And all this together shows God's love. Aren't these pretty together? But, you know, we can't do this, can't do this ourselves. We need the help of God's spirit because I'm not always patient, as my husband would say. And so I'm going to put these scarves in here, all these cloths of compassion. What were they? Compassion, care, and kindness, and patience, and love. And let's see what we will look like when we have these on all together. What do you think's in here? Something that I'm trying to open up. Are you ready? You ready to see what we, we're going to look like to God and to others if we're like that? Are you ready for this? And here we go. Ooh. What do you think? Isn't this just beautiful? Do you want to touch it at all? Annie said I could. And you could. This is a coat of many colors, but it's, it's all the different Ways we can be that makes us just beautiful. We're all beautiful people. We're clothed in brilliant colors. And how beautiful we are to God and to others as we follow the example of Jesus. And we can be sparkly examples of God's care for everyone in all things. And maybe people who see us will follow Jesus as well. Let's talk to God. Dear God. Thank you for sending your son to us. Thank you that through Jesus, we see an example of who you are and what is important to you. Give us the strength to be what you want us to be, clothed in compassion, kindness, patience, peace, and love. Thank you for all the sparkly loved ones here and around the world. Keep us safe. God bless each and every one of us. Amen. You didn't know you looked this beautiful, did you? Okay, you can go back to your seats. Thank you.
Thank you, Beth. Thanks, Annie Moore, for letting us use that beautiful robe that she made for one of the performances here locally in Elkhart. Um, kiddos, also I would announce, if you want to, you're welcome to come and sit at our kids' table in the back. There's um, coloring sheets and uh, Play-Doh and other things, or bored adults, you can work your way back there too if you want. Um, we won't judge you, or maybe we will, but we'll keep it to ourselves. Um, but yeah, kiddos, welcome to our kids' table in the back. Our scripture texts this morning come from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 6 to 14, and then Colossians 3, 12 to 14. So here is John. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of anyone's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And then Colossians 3, 12 to 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And Beth will be reading in Spanish for us today. Buenos dias. Estoy leyendo Juan 1, versos 6 a 14. Vine al hombre llamado Juan. Juan Dios lo envió como testigo para dar testimonio de la luz, a fin de que por medio de él todos crecieran. Juan no era la luz, sino que vino para dar testimonio de la luz. Esa luz verdadera, la que alumbra a todo ser humano, venía a este mundo. El que era la luz ya estaba en el mundo, y el mundo fue creado por medio de él. Pero el mundo no lo reconoció. Vino a lo que era suyo, pero los suyos no lo recibieron. Más a cuanto lo recibieron, a los que creen en su nombre les dio el derecho de ser hijos de Dios. Estos no nacen de la sangre, ni por deseos naturales, ni por voluntad humana, sino que nacen de Dios. Y el verbo se hizo hombre y habitó entre nosotros, y hemos contemplado su gloria, la gloria que corresponde al Hijo unigénito del Padre, lleno de gracias y de verdad. Y de Colón. Colosenses 3, versos 12 a 14. Por lo tanto, como escogidos de Dios, santos y amados, revístanse de afecto entrañable y de bondad, humildad, amabilidad y paciencia, de modo que se toleren unos a otros y se perdonen si alguno tiene queja contra otro. Así como el Señor los perdonó, Perdonen también ustedes, por encima de todo, vístanse de amor, que es el vínculo perfecto. Esta es la palabra del Señor. Gracias a Dios. Tim, we invite you up, and we look forward to the ways in which you're going to dare us to imagine God's robe this morning. Dare to imagine God's robe. 
the thread of love from swaddling clothes to sash and robe. Jake used a rather eloquent quote from George MacDonald this morning earlier, and I want to start with quote two, might not be quite as eloquent. Mark Twain once wrote, clothes make the man. Naked people have little or no influence on society. <laughs> and yet, at Christmas, we celebrate that the God of the universe chose to move in with us in exactly that form. Jesus, an infant in his birthday suit. Jesus comes in swaddling clothes, cloths simply wrapped or very loosely sewn or woven together. That's according to the Gospel of Matthew. Yet in today's Gospel text from John, when he talks about the word made flesh, the closest to clothing that he talks about is that we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Matthew says swaddling clothes. John says glory. Maybe they're one and the same. Love is the thread that holds them together. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son, John says a little later on. There are times to proclaim Jesus in swaddling clothes. God come close. Maybe particularly at those times when we feel vulnerable and need to know that God is with us in understanding our weakness and our vulnerability. When we felt emotionally vulnerable, which for me has been a good part of 2021. When we felt physically vulnerable. For some reason, one of the times I've thought of Jesus coming to us as a baby, naked and wrapped in swaddling clothes, has been the few times I've been in a hospital gown with the open backside. <laughs> I can think of a couple of times I've said, well, God, you know what it's like to feel vulnerably clothed. Though I suspect the swaddling clothes felt more secure to an infant than those robes do. For God so loved the world, he comes to us as a naked infant needing care. For God so loved the world, he came to us while his parents were refugees, pilgrims, and immigrants. For God so loved the world that Jesus was first announced to shepherds and workers, and then to wise folks, professors, and rulers. Vulnerable, self-giving love is the thread. Did Jesus have other clothes? Well, much later in the Gospel of John, it is said that the soldier at the cross took his tunic, which Beth referred to, a sewn one-piece garment that likely reached to or around his, below his, to or around or just below his knees, like Beth said, and likely was often tied at the waist with a rope of some kind. And it was probably not a long ankle-length affair that is often pictured on Jesus, which would have been worn, as Beth said, by the wealthy. It is also likely that he had a tallet, a shawl that could also be drawn up over his head. These, for the most part, were a working person's clothes, what was commonly worn. And that is often how we also need to see and proclaim Jesus, in his work clothes, in his father's carpentry shop, on his travels, doing his storytelling and his teaching, or with his disciples in their fishing boats wearing the clothes of most working people. We often need to know that God comes to us in our human commonness when we are working through things like job transitions or simply working on and being with others, like how I am at the office most days, or Mary or Jake are when they're there, or others of you are when you come to see us there, or when we are just at home, or when we are sorting out our values and making the common decisions our lives, of our lives, even the mundane ones, what to have for supper, how we're going to pay the bills, what tomorrow's schedule looks like. Jesus, the word of God made flesh, the common human but wise teacher comes to us to lovingly teach us and show us the way through life. Whatever tunic and talent Jesus wore, the common thread of their weave was and is love. It is likely, if not totally known, that the John who wrote the gospel, that John who wrote the gospel is the same John who wrote Revelation. 
At the end of scripture, in Revelation 1, 12 through 16, John sees Jesus arrayed rather as a judge. And it says, Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And on turning, I saw seven lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and with a gold sash across his chest. His head and his hair were, like, were white as white wool, white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet like burnished bronze, refined as in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. And from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun, shining with full force. A robe and sash with his white wool hair and his face shining like the sun. And I couldn't help but think of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who died early this morning at age 90. I can't help thinking of him because here we have Jesus standing like nothing so much as a judge. And I think Tutu stood as a kind of judge against so much injustice and oppression, especially in his role as head of the South African Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And yet it was as a judge with love and mercy and forgiveness. And as Jesus is standing in his robe and sash in Revelation as judge, it is as a judge but also as the one who loves us most completely. Frederick Buechner writes, The one who judges us most finally is also the one who loves us most fully. Like a loving parent, the worst sentence love can pass is that we behold and understand the suffering that love has endured for us. And that is also our acquittal. Love and justice are ultimately one. Jesus in his robe and sash is also both the lion and the lamb in Revelation. Justice and mercy are intertwined, finally one and the same. And love is the thread that holds it together. There are times to proclaim the reigning and judging Christ, the one who is both lion and lamb, the one who reigns with with love and the one who judges in, in love, when we see injustice, when we see how our lack of love creates violence against our fellow humans and against the creation we have been given to steward. Yet we, like God, must proclaim such judgment with mercy, and with a desire even for the wholeness of the ones committing the injustices and the violence. Love is the thread that holds justice and mercy, the judge's robe and sash, together. The common thread is love. Jesus in his sash and robe there in Revelation is holding in his right hand seven stars, And a few verses later, the writer explains that these stars represent the angels being sent to the churches. And in a sense, it is to one of those churches that the Apostle Paul is writing in today's epistle text, telling us to clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. And in a sense, I think we're being taken back to the tunic. As the body of Christ, the group of people who attempt to embody or reflect what Jesus was about here on earth, these are our work clothes, our tunic, the clothes we need to get comfortable in. And that's a process. But Paul says, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together. Love is the thread. We seek to embody love with humility. As the humans we are in jeans and shirts and blouses and work clothes, our tunics Dressed as Leonard Cohen writes, in our rags of light. And again, love is the thread which binds it together. I imagine Mary and Joseph loosely sewing swaddling clothes together in which to wrap vulnerable naked Jesus. And love is the thread. I imagine Mary sewing Jesus' first young adult tunic and Joseph wanting to make sure it's roomy enough so that it can move freely around the carpentry shop and when they go fishing, and the sleeves not too full so as not to get in the way of the tools. And again, love is the thread. I even dare to imagine Mary and Joseph sewing a robe and sash for their son for his coming in his fullness, 
coming as the one to judge us most finally, but also as the one who loves us most fully. And love is the thread. And I imagine a gown being sewn for the bride of Christ, for us, the church, a gown of elegant kindness and compassion. And Jesus is doing the sewing. And as always, binding it all together, love is the thread. Dare to imagine God's robe and the thread of love from swaddling clothes to tunic and talet to sash and robe. Amen. I invite you to turn to 164, Beloved God's Chosen. And as we sing this song, the, the ushers will receive our offering. You'll note that this is a hymn based on the passage from Colossians. <laughs> 